G'day folks, Corey Hindy. Hope you're doing really well. Now, this video is not super prepared, super edited, but I think it's really important to shoot. So I'm just going to shoot it now and hopefully give you some help because this is a problem that I'm seeing online a lot lately. And sometimes it's because of unscrupulous people. Sometimes it's because people haven't done their homework or whatever. So I'm going to give you a process to follow. So the video is called How to Find a Trusted Marketer. Now, this could go for all sorts of services online or in the real world. So when people are looking for a service provider or a person to do a thing, Quite often, they're not making great selections, and then uh, they will jump online and a discussion will take place. And I sit there and think, did you do your due diligence? Now, I'm not going to point the finger at a business person or a person for making a bad selection, because quite frankly, it's really hard to get it right. So this is just some tips to keep in mind or keep in your pocket for choosing any, anything really. Um, but in this instance, for this video, because I'm in the marketing space, I see this all the time. So people have hired a bad Google Ads person or bought some ads that didn't work or paid for some SEO that went nowhere or got a social media marketer that went nowhere, got a website that was rubbish. So these are the things. Now, you know, you, you could call this due diligence if you like, or you could just call this um, doing your homework. But these are the things I would advise people to work through. Let's say you're looking for a a Google Ads person or a website designer. Walk through these steps and it will help you to uh, avoid the untrustworthy people uh, and also make a selection that's going to give you the result that you want. So the first thing I would always do is I would find actual reviews for that person. So website designer. Let's use website designer as an example for this one. You want to get a new website. You go to some Facebook groups or whatever, and you get a thousand recommendations. And sometimes they're people recommending their mates. Sometimes they're people recommending themselves, whatever. Go to their reviews and check out what other people have said about their business. If you just take this step, you will avoid most of the carnage out there. This step alone will stop the marketing industry that I'm part of getting a bad reputation. So go to their Google business profile reviews, go to their Facebook reviews, any other service websites where they're listed, go and read the reviews. Yes, of course, there are fake reviews out there. You'll usually pick those up because the language isn't on point or they're very generic or boring, but that is a good starting point. Go and look at their reviews. If you're talking to a vendor and they simply don't have any reviews, uh, that should be a red flag. Why don't they have reviews? Okay, you don't have a Google business profile because you're an online business. Uh, what about Facebook reviews? Surely you've got a, a history of work. Okay, so sometimes people will jump online and go, oh, show me all of your clients data and clients work. That's not really cool because it's like going to the doctor and saying, hey, can I see all of your patients um, stats and health records, please? So I know that you're good. That ain't going to cut it. But go and find their reviews, okay? Dive in, read them, read the bad ones, see what happens when things go bad and how they resolve that. So go and check out their reviews. The next thing I would do is I would go and look at Facebook groups. There are some really big Facebook groups. Uh, there would be Facebook groups in your area, your country, your city, uh, your suburb even. There will be Facebook groups specific for the thing you want. And there'll be business Facebook groups. So get in there, have a look around, uh, use the search function in Facebook groups. That is really, really good. You can search for the business name. You can search for the owner's name. You can search for the service you're looking for and see who else has been recommended. Um, sometimes just going through this step, you'll find bad feedback, honest feedback. So go through that uh, Facebook group process because, and this goes for other places too. Like it, I'm not sure what you're after, but it might be Reddit or Quora or other online places or a discord group somewhere that people are go and find um, what people are saying out there because there's so much information out there about vendors um, you know like if you for, for our business we've got lots of Google reviews we've got Facebook reviews and people talk about us in Facebook groups so you can pretty much after these first two steps you'll figure out that we know what we're doing um, and you should do those two things as well the next one is just ask people you know like in the old days you just would ask your friends or business colleagues or ask people at the pub whatever hey I need a XYZ who do you recommend 
okay, and just get feedback from people and ask them some questions. You know, what did you find about their pricing? Did they deliver what they said they would deliver? Um, Timeframes, what happened when things went bad, all that stuff. Get talking to people. I'm finding that, like, the reason I shot this video now, I've been thinking about it for some time. Uh, just this morning, I saw in another Facebook group, some guy had paid for five or $6,000 worth of advertising, um, and it did, simply didn't work. Now, I'm not sure whether that guy's business is good or bad, but his experience was bad, and he got nothing for his $5,000. So did he talk to people? You know, Did he look at their reviews? Did he look at the Facebook group feedback about that, that business? So ask people, talk to people. It's really important. The next thing is look at their website, if it, especially if it's a marketer, they will have a website. Go and have a look at their website. What's on there? Is it up to date? Have they got links to other places that prove that they're credible and trustworthy, like LinkedIn and Facebook and social media? What does their website look like? Very often, people hire, for example, a Google Ads person. They have no website. Then They might be a freelancer, so that might be okay. They might not have a website, but go and find them on LinkedIn or wherever else they might be. Check them out. Okay, so that leads on to the next one, which is their social media activity. So check out the social media activity of the business that you're considering hiring. Okay, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, go to LinkedIn, go to Instagram, go to YouTube, go wherever they are and see what they're doing. It's pretty rare that a marketing business or contractor or freelancer has zero social media activity. Um, I accept that like our business right now, we're pretty much full. So we're not doing as much social media activity as we used to, um, but we're still doing some. So even the greats, you know, who are out there doing wonderful work will have something out there somewhere. You know, probably the most uh, reclusive marketer I've ever known of is a, is a fantastic email copywriter who only does emails to his list. That's all he does. But you can still find that and have a look at that. And you will have... Uh, proof that a business knows what they're doing. If someone's got no website and no social media activity, just avoid them. There's other people out there who you can do your due diligence. Remember, you're looking at investing significant hard-earned money here into this product or service. So you need to find that these people can do what they say they can do in a timely way for a fair price. The next one I would do is check out the email addresses. I get hammered daily by people pitching me SEO services, which is funny because that's what I do. But they use Gmail accounts. Straight away, delete. I just delete them. If you're a professional, you'll usually have a professional email address. So Corey.hind at goodoil.marketing. Yes, I have another Gmail account as well. But people who just have a Gmail account, to me, that is a red flag. If they'd gotten through all these steps, if I'd done all my homework on them and things seemed okay and they had a Gmail account, that would be okay. But if you can't find much activity or proof about this person or business or freelancer and they use a Gmail account, avoid that person. There will be better options out there. Okay. The next step is to find out who owns the business and Google them. All right. So every business is owned by somebody. Do your homework. Uh, Google that person. It's well worth it. Trust me, we've done this before many times for ourselves and for clients, and we've recommended that they avoid that person's business because that person is unscrupulous and not very good. So make sure you Google that person. If they're in the online space, if they're in the marketing space, they will have a footprint online. Now, the last two things are really interesting because often online you'll get people saying, uh, show me your processes exactly with a particular client and the results and their personal data for that business. That's just not going to happen. Okay. It's like going to the pub and saying, um, teach me how to make the food. And by the way, I want the food for free until I like it. Not going to happen. So, but you can ask them about their processes. Okay. Tell me about the project timeline, what steps we've got, what milestones we've got, what does that look like? Uh, what can I expect in the first month? What can I expect in the second month? Um, do you have a generic sort of process template or can you just talk me through that? And if they're good at their thing, they'll say, yeah, on weeks zero to four, we do this stuff and then we do this stuff and then we do that stuff. Um, really simple conversation. Sometimes I'll have that outlined on their website or their socials as well. So learn about their processes. Don't ask for, I mean, some people will have um, data they can provide and evidence 
um, and that's cool. Um, just be aware that you, it's it's a bit tough to ask for that stuff because, like, I don't give my clients information to anybody because it's private between me and them. Much like a psychologist, you ain't getting the stuff. But I can talk to you about the process we use for SEO. I can talk to you about, in fact, you can buy our process for Google Business Profile. In fact, we've got the whole thing on a YouTube video. You can see the process that we use for Google Business Profile. It's out there, okay? If you follow our emails and our stuff, you'll see that our processes are pretty robust. Uh, they're out there, and I can talk about those until the cows come home. No problems at all. So ask these people, what is your process? And then probably the last thing is talk to them about their reporting. So let's say it's a Google Ads person or an SEO person or a social media marketer, um, anyone that's providing business growth opportunities for you, um, just ask, hey, what reports do I get? Uh, how does, what does that look like? Uh, you might get a, you know, an example of one. Uh, they might have a document that outlines what that looks like. I mean, for us, we tell people, hey, we give you this, this, and this, and then we give you a video breakdown each month talking about the data, what we've done, and what we're doing. So we call that the three Ds, done, data, doing. Uh, and we do that video report for people uh, simply because, uh, well, it's a win-win. It's easier for me to do the video reporting for clients and they really, really love it because they've worked with marketers before that send out 88 page documents of stuff they simply don't understand. So we do a five to 10 minute video and people go, oh, okay, I get it. Um, yep, we spent that, we got that, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So they are the steps that I would recommend you go through. Um, I'd love to be able to help people more with avoiding the untrustworthy or poor performers out there. So if you want to comment below and ask for some help, please do that. Um, send me an email if you want to track me down and ask questions. But if you follow this process, you should be pretty robust. And seriously, that first one is one of the main ones. Um, I'm myself developing a new product called Marketers List, which is partially to solve this problem. And for marketers to qualify for Marketers List, they have to provide us with a review platform that we can check out to see that they are credible. So if they don't have Google reviews or Facebook reviews, they're not on the list because we want to provide a list that business owners can go to and have a bit of trust that it's better than just you know, a blanket directory where every man and his dog can pop their details there. So work through that list. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, that's the goal with this. I'm trying to help people to make better decisions so the business does well, they don't get done for their money, um, and just build the trust back up in marketing. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll talk later. Comments are welcome.